Hey y'all, Coach Unified Fight here, guys. Stacey and Chris with me. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. And in today's live stream, we're going to be talking about the calendar, and in particular, we're going to be talking about Hanukkah. All right. Hanukkah is upcoming, and after we talk about how we know that it is upcoming, talking a little bit about how the uh, dates, the calendar works and all of that, we're going to show a video or two on the significance of Hanukkah and how it's going to play a big part in the Great Awakening. Sounds right. good. Especially here in the year 2023. This is the calendar, the feast day calendar. It's in black and white. It may be a little bit harder to see. Can you see that, Say. I can't. If I blow, blow it up for you, uh, maybe everybody can see it. It's a little bit difficult. All right. Well, what, the reason why we're showing this in relationship to Hanukkah is because of the Feast of Dedication that it displays there on the calendar. Right. Right. And one of the uh, features of this Rev, what Rev is this, Chris? That's 12.1. I understand. Rev 12, the, one of the benefits of Rev 12 is it shows the zodiac signs here. Mm. This is the book called Second Enoch. It's called The Secrets of Enoch. We see here that, matter of fact, would you go ahead and read verse 1 somewhere? Those men showed me the other course, that the moon, twelve gates, crowned from east to west, by which the moon goes in and out of the customary times. Okay. And if I could pull this back up here, I'm going to allow you to talk about this. And what this just said, using this picture as a backdrop, what did he just say? So it said that the moon has 12 gates, and that's the 12 gates going around here. So those are what we know at the Zodiac. We have the, the names there like fish and ram and bull and twins, so, but those are the same constellations that we are familiar with. Yeah, and those are the customary times that it cycles through during the year. Right. And if we come over here, we can see those customary times. Right. Right. And so what is that when he's talking about the new moon? What is he talking about when you see here? And I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot. So you would be seeing where, what gate the new moon comes up in. So now we did have a new moon. If we go back to the calendar and show them the calendar, if you show them the calendar, what you what they'll see is that we had a new moon that was back there in or about December the 13th or 14th. And that is the new moon that started the current month that we're in, right? The current um, month or month that we're in. Right, right. The thing about it in relationship to those crowns that we just saw or heard about in Second Enoch and their relationship to the Zodiac, what we understand is that when we had that new moon back there on December the 13th, we was to look past that moon and see which constellation we were in to know which part of the year we were in. Is that correct? Right. All right. And so when we go back to the image of the uh calendar there for the feast day calendar we're able to draw a line so draw a line there to show us where we're at or what yeah so right there you can't really go farther than that because the sun doesn't tell you where in the month you are right it just tells you what gate you're in right yeah and but if you scroll up a little bit you can show everybody that we are not quite in winter time yet according to what Enoch was telling us right 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 this last new moon started Sagittarius, which is the archer. Right. And so that right there tells us that we are in the ninth month. Right. Right. So when the ninth month started here, you see that, Stacy, and the tenth month will start up here when we get ready to go into the gate with the goat, which is what, Capricorn or something? Yeah. We are able to get in the correct gate here using these constellations so that we can further find out that Hanukkah is only a few days away. Because when we add the moon here, knowing that it is waxing a waning crescent, meaning we have about seven days according to what I saw, it has only a little time left before, a few days left before we get to the end of the month. Right. That will be the 10th month. Well, Hanukkah is more like down here on the 25th. So we only have a few more days to go before we get to Hanukkah. Right. If I get rid of that, we see that Hanukkah starts on 
um, the seventh, the seventh, probably the evening of January the sixth, when people will start their Hanukkah celebration. Right. Now that's one way of doing it. Another way we know was if we pull the other calendar up here. This one here, we get the same information, just a different way. We have to use uh, second or first Enoch here in the book of the Revolutions of the Luminaries of Heaven. Right. Because it is in these texts where he talks about the 30, 30, and 31 days. Right. Right. He tells us there that um, the year begins when the sun, the moon, and the stars converge there in the fourth gate. Right. Which we know is what? That would be March. The equinox, right? The equinox, yeah. And then from there we start counting 30, 30, and 31 day periods, right? Right. Well, that's what this calendar is showing. Just like the other one is just showing it in a different way. You have the uh, equinox, which is in this area here. And then you're going 91 days until you get to the beginning of summer here. And then 30, 30, and 31 days until you get to the beginning of fall here. And then another 91 days until you get to winter here. And then 91 days until you get back to spring there. Right. All right. So if we start here on March the 20th, zoom in so everybody can see. And then we come in and we're just going to add 91 day periods. We're going to add three of them 91 day periods. We see that they go uh, July, June the 19th, September the 18th, and July the 18th. December. I'm sorry, I said it. This day, right? December 18th. December the 18th. I'm just calling out numbers. My dyslexia is kicking in, I believe. So, thank you for Stacy saving the day again. Because I need all the help I can get. So, uh, so those are the dates. That's the earliest that the Day of Remembrance can come? Right, exactly. So you don't, that is the star representation of the Day of Remembrance. Okay. The seasons. <laughs> so then you need the moon representation, which is what? That's the new moon. That's the new moon. And then you get the sun representation, which is what? Sunset. Sunset on the new moon. They come right. together. And so you have the convergence of all three, the sunset on the new moon, after this particular gate. Or within that particular gate, sometime between uh, December the 18th and uh, back to the springtime, right? Do we have um, the 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 time for the new moon that brings in winter? So all of that to prove once again this calendar, right? Right, because you know it's really important, and it tells us that Hanukkah begins there on. January the 7th, January the 6th, January the 7th. Can you see that state? I can. And then it will span the Day of Remembrance, right, Chris? Right. And it does that every year, right? Right. Okay, so on the right-hand side, you see the 30 and the 3. That's where it be. That's where the season or the year begins. And then 31 days, you see the triangle down at the bottom. That's uh, one of the seasons, also the Sabbath days, and, the, and it's time to pray. And then you have the other triangles off to the left there. It is after these particular days do we have the convergence of the sun, the moon, and the stars. And beginning of a season. Beginning of the season. And Hanukkah always spans this season here, winter. So it'll always be straddling the point. It's always straddling the point, adding significance to that particular day of remembrance. Right. All right, so let's play a video. Stacey, you got anything you want to add before we play this video? Um, I was just... Um thinking about how all this qualifies when um, we're told in Genesis how we will be um, keeping our times with the sun and the moon, the celestials rather, and so it just all fits in so perfectly. Hey y'all, Coach Fai here, I'm talking about Hanukkah, and if we could have a major event to occur during Hanukkah, talking about a spiritual event like the Great Awakening or the Rapture or the sailing of the 144,000. And in this class, we're going to go down through certain scriptures to show if these events are possible to occur during this eight day long festival we know as Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the Feast of Dedication. 
But anyway, let's step down through, like we said, these definitions, taking them one by one, so we can see how there will be a rapture or a great awakening and or the selling of the 144,000 during the Feast of Hanukkah. Definition one says an expression or manifestation of ecstasy or passion. Now, of course, ecstasy means overwhelming feeling of great happiness or joyful excitement. And passion is talking about a strong or barely controllable emotion. When you look over in the book of 2 Maccabees and chapter 10 verses 6 through 8, when you hear about the Feast of Maccabees, you see that it is a eight day long celebration full of joy and rejoicing. During this whole week, the people who celebrate this festival will be singing, they will be rejoicing, they will be in a state of ecstasy or passion. So, in other words, many people will experience a rapture type event during the Feast of Hanukkah. Like the Feast of Tabernacles, it is one of the most rapture-filled holy days on the sacred calendar. So, there will definitely be a rapture-type event during the Feast of Hanukkah. But, let's look at some of the other definitions of the word, because they could also occur during this eight-day-long festival. Like definition two, which says a state or experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. Now, this definition kind of points to the selling of the 144,000. Now, that could be a bit of a stretch. But then when you jump back to Revelation and chapter 7, it's also talking about the 144,000. And it's talking about how they are sealed in their foreheads and in their hands before the four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds allowed those winds to hurt the earth and the sea and the trees. So could it be possible that this sailing would occur during the Feast of Hanukkah? Well, if you look at the book called Second Esdras and chapter 2 verses 37 through 39 that you see that is during the Lord's feast that we receive the seals. Verse 38 says, Rise, stand, and see the number of those sealed at the feast. And of course that number being 144,000. So being that Hanukkah is a feast of the Lord and some at least one of the 144,000 could experience the Lord's feast for the first time during the Feast of Hanukkah. It could very well be during this festival that they receive their seal. So speaking statistically, it is highly probable that some of the 144,000 will be sealed during the Feast of Hanukkah and this sailing process will be a state or experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. But even those people who are not members of the 144,000 will experience a similar state of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. This is yet another way that a rapture will occur during the Feast of Hanukkah with the sailing of the Lord's people. Now the next definition of the word is a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things which is another form of rapture. This one actually points to the great awakening that all of humanity is expected to go through. You see where it's talking about a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. This knowledge of divine things comes by way of intuition, our conscious and dreams. But as part as my personal testimony, I'll let you know that it was 
during Hanukkah of the year 2019 when I started receiving dreams every night sometimes four five and six times a night and I can say since that time I have experienced greater intuition and I believe that I have been more in tune with my conscious that's all part of the spiritual exaltation all part of what we call the great awakening so could this great awakening occur throughout all of humanity during this time for that let me jump you over to a book called the third testament of the bible and we're going to come down and we're going to look at chapter two you can find a link to this book in the description of this video both an audio and a PDF that you could download to your computer for free but I want to drop you down to verse 5 of chapter 2 it says do you remember that cloud in which my disciples saw me ascend the last time that I manifested myself to them in truth it was written that I would come again in a cloud and this I have fulfilled this third testament of the Bible is actually describing the second coming of Christ. It's talking about how his second coming occurred in the year 1884 when we started receiving the teachings that make up what we know today as the third testament of the Bible. In other words, the second coming of the Messiah the man we know as the word made flesh came again in the form of the word of God in 1884 and my point is is that during the feast of Hanukkah many people will come to that realization some even after watching this video many will go in and find that the PDF version of this book or the audio version of this book and read it and they definitely will have an experience in which their spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things in the other words many people will be raptured during the feast of Hanukkah that's what the great awakening is all about whereas our material man is exalted at this part of our spiritual evolution during the great awakening our spirits will be exalted that is the great awakening so on a lesser extent the great awakening will occur throughout humanity but will this be the festival in which all of humanity will go through this great awakening I don't think so because this materialism will continue to be a blindfold for the majority of humanity but anyway let's go on to the third definition of the word rapture and that is the final assumption of Christians into heaven during the end times according to Christian theology now is this possible that this event could happen during the feast of Hanukkah if we come over to 1 Corinthians and chapter 15 we read one of the most common verses that is talked about when someone is teaching about the rapture verse 15 says in a moment in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall rise incorruptible and we shall be changed you've probably heard this verse a hundred times but one thing that I want to bring out to you in this verse is how it's talking about the last trump how these events happen during the last trump when someone's talking about the rapture and when it is that we're supposed to be raptured and they're talking about this event that's supposed to happen at the last trump at the last trumpet blast the question we should be asking is when was the first trump but anyway maybe it is possible that the other six trumpets have blown and we're now awaiting this final assumption of Christians into heaven so the question is could this event happen during Hanukkah if you would jump down in the comment section and tell me what you think if I've missed something or if you have something you can add please add to the discussion down there in the comment section Video, which, that video was all about whether Hanukkah could have something to do with this awakening that everybody's talking about. Right. And I personally believe it does only because the um, scripture says 
feast days. He said that we will be um, gathered at the feast days, and it didn't say which feast days. And from my experience and what I've observed, it could be just about any feast day, mm -hmm. including any old regular old Sabbath day. Hmm. It just involves, you know, getting into the scripture and that kind of thing. Touching more on this great awakening. So what we're saying then is as far as Hanukkah is concerned All you really have to do is participate in Hanukkah the right way You have to do certain things on Hanukkah and when you do those certain things on Hanukkah including reading a lot of scripture You can experience what we're talking about here this elevated state that people are experiencing Right they call it the great awakening, but it's not really all of that great when you think about it It's kind of who we're supposed to be in the first place Right. It's just a matter of getting purified and getting our Father, you know, on our side as far as helping us to get back to who we are supposed to be. And it just so happened that people tend to do this on feast days. And the next one is Hanukkah that's coming up. So let's look at the calendar one more time here. But all right, so we have January the seventh is when it starts. It'll probably start around the evening on the sixth. That's when people will um, start their dinners there for the Hanukkah celebration. It will be on or about January the 6th or the 7th. Now notice that the Sabbath day falls on, what is that? That's about the 8th, right? Right. I need to stay away from that microphone. But it, it's, So that will be the 8th, and so a lot of people will still be in preparation mode on the 7th. Even though it will be the first day of Hanukkah, they will be doing kind of like we're doing Pentecost, where they will be offering their sacrifices and cooking their meat and getting all of their preparation done right. as they get ready for the uh, sabbatical day, which is probably a more significant day. And the first day, the Sabbath day, is always more important. Right. And so it will be the, the next day following that will be the 8th. So we will have the Hanukkah, if Father willing, we'll have a Hanukkah special on um, a Feast of Dedication uh, festival on the 7th and then a sabbatical celebration on the 8th and then another uh, Hanukkah dedication thing for the rest of the week until we get up to about January the 13th when we have the Day of Remembrance. Right. That will be a very special day as far as this uh, feast is concerned because it is the Day of Remembrance, it is the New Moon Day, and it is during a holiday, a holy day I should say, so that it will be a very big day. Right. Uh, they, we definitely want to make sure we're uh, doing everything as far as honoring the Sabbath day and doing what we're supposed to be doing as far as Hanukkah, which is rejoicing with the tree limbs, right? Singing and rejoicing with the tree limbs, right, for the week. Right. And then, of course, we want to add the scripture in there, which is a key part to these these uh, latter day festivals is adding a lot of scripture. They didn't have that back in the day because they didn't have scripture like we do today. Right. So we have that. And then... The last day will be about what January the 13th or 14th, 14th, uh, because it is an eight day celebration just like tabernacles. It's doing tabernacles in the wintertime. Basically, for those of us whose tabernacles was disturbed or we wasn't able to do it or if we forgot about it or didn't know about it or didn't think we did it right, we have another opportunity on Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication, to do the same acts. Even being in a booth, just like on the, uh, just like doing tabernacles, being in a booth and doing everything just like tab, just like tabernacles, just a little colder, mm -hmm. and, and and so we can do a lot of making up, and a lot of people have a lot of this making up to do, right? Right. Right. And this is a way we can do it because it is a feast day, and we have this opportunity. And then after it, we will start to focus in on Purim, and then Passover, which is our other feast days, along with our Sabbath days. All right. Now the next thing we need to talk about is charity. Okay. Because a lot of people are missing out on these spiritual blessings because they're not doing the charity that goes with these festival days. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're reading the scripture, but they're not making the necessary sacrifices. And what we're going to talk about in the next video is the purpose of these sacrifices and these offerings that people are all to, supposed to make. You see here in Deuteronomy 16 and 16, where it says the feast days were not supposed to show up empty handed. Right. Well, tabernacles and Hanukkah are similar, so we're not supposed to show up to Hanukkah empty handed as well. So people need to make a offering or contribution of some type. Mm -hmm. And I remind people that we give people the opportunity to make contributions to support our channel in the description of this video if they wanted to do so. But the main thing is that people need to know is that they need to do something. 
Yeah, we always appreciate um, the support and we definitely encourage it um, because um, not only does it, um, I'm going to say, take some of the tension off of you as far as doing the videos, but um, it actually just it helps out a lot. <laughs> Yeah, and and it's necessary on both ends. It's necessary on both ends is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, and in today's video, we're talking about charity and the gifts that our Heavenly Father promises us and how to take advantage of them. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. Oh my disciples, your greatest mission will be that of charity. Many times you will perform it in secret without any display, not letting your left hand know what your right hand has given. But there will be occasions when your charity will have to be witnessed by your brethren in order for them to learn to share. So. Notice right here how he says your charity will be your greatest mission. I mean, think about that. This is the scripture saying that our charity is our greatest mission. And this is why I wanted to do this class. You know, we, we, we've been talking about charity for a while, but it's really starting to hit home as we actually start to practice what we've been teaching when it comes to this charity. He says, forget about payment. I am the father who rewards with justification of deeds of his children without neglecting a single one. But looking at this verse right here, what it's telling us is that after we do our charity, what our rewards will be is telling us that our rewards will be the justification for our deeds. Now, I just did a video not too long ago where I was talking about first fruits and my experiences with doing a lot of charity around first fruits. And I may have left the impression that, you know, everything was going to all of a sudden become beautiful and, you know, around your place simply because you started spending money on people. No, that's not what the scripture is saying. But what it's saying here is that our reward for doing charity will be justification for our deeds, justification for our wrongdoings. In other words, we are counseling out sins by doing charity. We don't have to sit down and try to tally up all of the wrongs that we have done so that we can go find those people and pay back the restitution for the wrongs that we have done to them. What we can now do is do charitable deeds and we will be justified for those acts that we have done in the past. This is very big, guys. This is life changing because as of now, those of us who don't understand this or those of us who are not doing charitable deeds are being punished through pain, through sicknesses, through poverty, through uh, persecutions. All kinds of things are coming up on us, helping us to gain our necessary merits to cover up those deeds that we have done to pay restitution for those deeds that we have done well you can pay restitution if you so choose to do so or you can use your charity in order to get justification for those deeds so restitution or justification pain or charity it's up to us so my point is to do charity Guys, if you've learned anything from this channel, add this to the list. Do charity as much as you can, as many opportunities that are given to you. Do those charitable deeds, including praying for people, uh, laying hands on people and healing people, but also giving of your material possessions. Um, like the scripture says, if you have two coats, give one of them away. If you don't, guys, you're going to have a closet full of unusable clothes and you're going to wish you had a shared back when you had the opportunity. So take that opportunity to do so now. And in the meantime, you can do a charitable deed by prayer for me and I will do the same for you. Shalom. All right. So what do y'all think of all of that? Y'all ready for Hanukkah? Uh, I'm ready for Hanukkah. I'm not ready for the coldness. <laughs> Are you going to sleep in a booth? Oh, this sounds yeah. like somebody's flat or going in a tent. Yeah. I didn't say that either. <laughs>
<laughs> might need to uh, take some extra blankets out there or something. Yeah, yeah, we need to we need to basically get warm for this one, especially if we're going to be out in a tent. But in closing, if you would, Stacy, would you go ahead and add a blessing to the people from Numbers chapter 6? Sure, I would love to. All right, well, y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Leave us any questions and concerns you have. And tell us how you're going to be keeping Hanukkah this year. The Father bless you and keep you. The Father make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Father turn his face toward you and give you peace. So be it. Shalom. Shalom.